All right, Flooring Industry, we are back with another webinar Wednesday. Today you have Taylor and myself, and we're here to talk to you about geo-targeting advertising, how to find more customers and stand out. It's a huge topic. A ton of retailers ask us about it constantly. What is geo-targeting? How can you leverage it? What are some creative ways to help you boost some leads and drive people further down that conversion funnel to sell more flooring? But before we get into the meat of it, we're going to meet my co-host. So first off, Taylor, you're up. Tell them about yourself. Hey, Jeff. Thank you for that. So my name is Taylor Ash. I'm the marketing manager here at Broadloom, uh, Florida man living in Gilbert, Arizona. That's right. Born and raised down in Tampa, Florida. Uh, went to school in Gainesville at the University of Florida. Uh, before coming to Broadloom, I worked at one of the largest retailers in the U.S. You may know it as Express Flooring. Uh, was their director of marketing there. So had a lot of fun growing that company. Uh, I probably am the biggest uh, UF Gators and Tim Tebow fan. Um, spent a lot of time on campus, went to a lot of football games. It was a great time there. Uh, and also a former golf pro. Um, played on a few little mini tours, had great fun, worked at some golf courses. Um, and really excited, actually, Jeff, to kind of host and put together the golf tournament at FloorCon this year. So really excited about that. All right, real quick, Taylor, what is the thing you're looking forward to most at the golf tournament this year? And there's only one real answer. Um, winning? Uh, <laughs> no, I think uh, all the contests we're going to have are going to be incredible. Um, it's going to, it's a charity golf tournament. So all the proceeds are going to a great fund uh, of the JDRF. Um, and I can tell you, I don't know if we're going to put it out there quite yet, but there's some really good uh, prizes. Put it um, out some there. All right. If you get a hole in one, you could win a brand new Tesla. Or if you don't want a Tesla, you can choose $50,000 cash. All right. Well, if you know my golf game, uh, we're not at risk of losing that. But I am Jeff Beaver. I'm a VP of marketing here at Broadloom. Same fun facts, same line, because I'm not that fun of a guy. So we're going to get right into it. But real quick, make sure you hang out afterward. We're going to do a live Q&A. Uh, cause I'm sure there's going to be a ton of questions on geotargeting because there's a lot that gets into it, but Taylor and I are going to cover the things that you really need to know how it works, some of the functionality that you can do. We know there's a lot of creative, uh, retailers out there, and this is going to spur a ton of ideas. So I want to help set that up. So let's get into it. So first off, why are we talking about geotargeting? Really simple. It allows uh, you to get more people to your store. Uh, shoppers are two times as likely to visit your store after seeing an ad if you use geotargeting. And look, it comes back to everything. The more personal the message is, the more on target the advertising is, the more likely someone's going to go to your store. So it's one of those things that's like, yeah, duh. But when you frame it in a proper way and are able to see it really clearly and understand what it is, I, I think it's going to open up a lot of doors for foreign retailers, especially the ones doing this themselves. Um, so we're going to first talk about what it is. So Taylor, what is geotargeted advertising? Yeah, so geotargeted advertising, it's essentially a technology that allows you to precisely target shoppers based on a variety of signals. Uh, those signals can be um, specific locations that you want your ads, and those can be as large as a city, um, a state, or even down to a specific zip code. Um, really nice for targeting because if you know certain zip codes have certain attributes that you want to advertise in, it's a great way to target just those zip codes. Uh, a radius of a specific location, whether it be your store, a different store, um, a certain landmark, things like that. Uh, it's really good to create some specific messaging towards that location. And you can actually use it two ways. So one, uh, shoppers that are physically in that location um, or also they've shown interest. So maybe somebody is coming to visit or someone's uh, going out of town for something and they start to look for things in that area that maybe they're not physically in. Uh, that means they're showing interest in that area. So you can target them with those location-based uh, geotargeted advertisements as well. Uh, the platforms we're going to focus on today, uh, Google Ads, which includes YouTube, Google Display Network, Search, things like that, uh, and then Facebook and Instagram. All right. Well, that's going to cover the gauntlet of how many guitar, uh, consumers that you can get in front of, right? When we're looking at Google ads, YouTube ads, Facebook, Instagram, 
We also support this across other platforms. But again, the biggest focus is that larger 80 to 90% of shoppers that you can get in front of. And while there are really complex, cool, creative things you can do with geo-targeted advertising, we're going to really help simplify it a bit here. We're going to focus on two key things that happen. One is the location aspect and how you can leverage and utilize some pretty interesting tips and tricks and tactics. And then the other one is going to be the messaging. How can you make that more hyper-personalized, literally speak to a customer in a way that they haven't been spoken to, probably especially in uh, this industry, and allow yourself to stand out in your market because you guys are the best at what you do. So as we dive in, the first one as geo-targeted uh, advertising would uh, sort of have you think of is location. So Taylor outlined it really well here. Be able to target uh, based on a ton of different things. Um, you know, you can look at where there's high household income. You can look at the uh, different cities and zip codes and uh, DMAs if you're a larger retailer and look at you know those designated marketing areas. Um, there's a ton of different ways you can do that. You can do radius targeting, but you know without going through all the technical aspects of it, we want to just boil it down a little bit, right? So you can target where your customers are, so like you know where you want to be in front of. Uh, and those should pretty closely align with your service areas. We know some people want to expand a little bit because if you have to drive another five or 10 minutes to close a job, you're definitely going to do that. Uh, another one is service avoidance, right? Maybe there's some areas that are not easy to get in and out of. There's maybe a ton of traffic. Uh, you know, Maybe you've had painful or bad experiences there and you just don't want your advertising to be there. Maybe the competition is really stiff there and you know, there's a really big retailer out there and you just don't want to you know compete on dollar there but th there might be other competition down the road that you want to go after so another location you want to focus on is maybe a competitor that you want to go after uh and then this is one that you know taylor brought up i thought was really good uh where your business is going right it's a really good approach to soft test new areas and see what the traction is for your service and we'll see what that looks like from the uh, efficiency side on uh the messaging but uh, then Taylor is going to walk through uh, efficient advertising and how this technique and tactic can lead to improved uh, performance metrics. Uh, then we're going to talk about some creative things that you can do with this, whether it's on the messaging side, the relevancy, proximity, as we mentioned, and also helping boost your in-market credibility. And then last, we're going to talk about you know ways for you to stand out, um, things that you can put in those messages based on the areas that you're targeting are going to lead to a better experience, uh, more people coming to your site, more leads, and you know, closing deals at a higher rate. So as we transition over, we're going to first look at location. So uh, before we dive into it, we are going to role play a little bit here because we like to have fun with these things. And it's always helpful to contextualize this type of concept through a real world example. We're not going to use flooring retailers because we don't want there to be competition here. So we are going to look at Taylor's alma mater and uh, pull up UF. So if we're looking at Florida and in this situation, Taylor and I both work for a University of Florida apparel company. So we're selling gear to Florida Gator fans. So how do we do that? So, you know, we're not going to be here and uh, talk about how amazing Tim Tebow is and how you want to hear uh, him speak at FloorCon, but Taylor, uh, let's talk about the location of where you would want to target uh, University of Florida fans, um, at least the bulk of them. Yeah, I mean, if you think of uh, advertising and where you want to get the most return and where you want to have the most impact, uh, there's no one in that stadium, more than likely, that is not a University of Florida fan. And if you look at all the people in that stadium, they're all wearing orange and blue. Um, so there's not a better... Uh, condensing of your target market than right there at Ben Hill Griffin Stadium in Gainesville. All right. So this is why I need Taylor. I have no idea what the name of the stadium is. So yeah, the first place that we're going to start is the key service area. So we're going to take it all the way back for a second. Then we're going to slowly go in and start to give you a couple of ideas of how you can make some really creative uh, activations, especially for the dealers who are uh, super savvy and take it on these accounts themselves. So if I'm looking for... Uh, U of F uh, fans, you know, the very first tier I'm going to look at is probably all Florida, right? But as we mentioned on, you know, the efficiency side, if I'm targeting all of Florida, probably not going to be super efficient, right? 
probably somewhat relevant. Most people know, you know, the Gators, but we want to start to drill it down a little bit more. So with different targeting capability, you can start to drill in a little bit more to like maybe where your customers are. So in this instance, it'd be Gainesville, Florida. Um, you know, at least we have a pretty good idea that there are going to be some Gator fans there. Uh, Taylor, after that, where is another place that we can start to target people to get in front of U of F fans? Obviously right on campus. I mean, just like we showed a couple slides before, uh, the stadium is a great place to target. You know, uh, number one, you have tens of thousands of students there that are probably looking to buy some Gator gear. Uh, so if you want to get hyper-specific, uh, plant a pin right on the University of Florida's campus and just do a radius off of that. And then as you look at this example, you can see we go service area, where your customers are, and then you see we really lock into University of Florida place. You can literally target the locations of these businesses. But then you see right next to that, uh, that plus one mile. And you can see a one mile radius around that. We can actually go from one mile all the way up to about 25 miles plus and beyond. Uh, and then you can actually start to you know negatively target other areas in there. So we're not going to get super complex here. But you can start to see how you can adjust things to make it super hyper specific service area. Uh, in terms of where you would want to target people for U of S. So again, we're still focusing on location here. We're going to talk about how you can do some cool things with the messaging to make these campaigns stand out. You're starting to see the full functionality. And these screenshots that we're showing you right now are uh, Facebook ads. Uh, Google has very similar functionality, and we'll talk about that in a moment. But again, it starts to give you an idea of how hyper-targeted you can get down to the very business location that you want to target. So... Right after hyper uh, hyper specific service areas, you know, a couple of seconds ago we talked about targeting Florida as a whole, and the reason we don't want to do that as a whole, but again, I always look at it, a objection as also an opportunity is who my competition is. So there's two ways to look at it. One, you can negatively target, right? Avoid via geo targeting Tallahassee, where you know. Uh, the Seminoles, the university, or the, oh my God, uh, Florida State University Seminoles are. So you can target them uh, or negatively target them, which means I want to avoid them if we're looking at that initial example with Florida. Now, here's where you can start to have some fun with the messaging. You can start to run ads in Tallahassee where it's something along the lines of, you know, uh, Gator fan in Seminole country. We have the right, you know, t-shirt, mug, hat, shirt for you, right? So you can start to get really creative with the way that you are targeting people. You know that these are probably going to be Seminole fans, but the people who are going to see the ad and resonate with it are going to be those U of F fans that will then click over to your site and buy apparel. So you also be targeting your competition and utilizing the messaging to make your ad campaign stand out. And then right after that, again, we talked about how we wanted to target Florida and you know, there's a lot of retailers that, you know, go state to state. And where are some places that I wouldn't want to advertise or be wasted money? Obviously, Tuscaloosa, you're going to find Bama. So, you know, just continue to think about, you know, are you, are you going to find any U of F fans there? Probably not. Um, so you can see where the location that you're targeting and the messaging that you're leveraging can all these different, you know, examples and look, there might be U of F fans there, and you can try to test that sort of seminal approach uh, in Alabama, but we'd probably recommend against it. So, you know, you can see how you can target competition and get creative, where you definitely want to avoid. But then Taylor, best case scenario, uh, Gators have a killer year. Uh, where are they going to go? Obviously, the national championship at Energy Stadium in Houston, Texas. So then from that perspective, right, and this is sort of that pre-lead campaign, you know, we talked about where your business is going. Um, you know, let's say by some miracle, because uh, we know Tebow's not on the field anymore, uh, the Gators make it to the uh, BCS National Championship Bowl. Um, if I'm an apparel company, before they get there and during the uh, bowl game, and maybe even a little bit after, I'm going to want to target those ads, you know. Gator fans left the swamp, grab your official BCS Gator, you know, gear here, right? So it also can be the location you're going. And think about this concept, uh, you know, as the Gators are going around the country, different, you know, opponents that they're going to, 
you know, so usually training camp is offsite or at different locations. Uh, sometimes they do, you know, these, um, you know, third party locations to help expand uh, the game. You should be thinking about that very similarly to how you think about your flooring store, right? Uh, and Taylor's going to hop into that in a second, but this is just giving you an idea of how you can get super targeted uh, with geo-targeted campaigns based on location, avoiding going after competition, where your business is going, and how hyper-local you can get. So uh, Taylor, can you talk to us a little bit about you know some of the efficiencies that you're going to get from that type of location-based targeting via geo-targeting, and then how we can start to map that to some messaging? Yeah, absolutely. So some of the most efficient advertising you're going to do digitally is going to be geo-targeted. And for all the reasons that we've talked about, but here's a couple ways to adjust your messaging uh, to specific locations. So like we've been talking about uh, the Gators and when they travel, things like that. Think of sporting events or concerts. If you know a big tour is coming through, um, you know, you can target that arena or that uh, stadium, wherever that concert's going to be, and you can tailor your messaging to it. Um, you know, home shows. If you're going to a home show, you wherever that home show is, like here we have State Farm Stadium where the Arizona Cardinals play. Uh, there's home shows there all the time. If you're going to be set up at that home show, target it. Uh, because chances are people that are walking around that home show, they're going to be Googling things or they're going to see a, a different business or whatever. And they're going to start looking things up on their phone. You want to make sure that you're showing up there. And we'll talk a little bit about some messaging that you can add to those ads specifically in a little bit. Uh, but then even neighborhood cities. So if you look at the uh, examples over on the right side here, um, you know, if you if you want to establish yourself as the expert, right, you want to make sure people know you're local, you're not just some national chain coming through advertising, use that messaging, talk about the neighborhoods, top rated DC dentists uh, on the bottom right. Um, that one is uh, Midtown. Um, that's an Atlanta area. So if you tailor it that way, it automatically gives credibility to you. And you're kind of establishing that you're a part of the community, you're in the community, and it really works when you start to call out neighborhoods and cities. Um, as far as your ad spend efficiency, here's where it comes in. If you can't service a certain customer, why are you spending money there? Uh, Every time someone clicks on that ad, it's costing you money. And if they fill out a form or they make a phone call to your store and you can't service them, uh, you've just wasted money on getting that uh, prospect to give you a call or fill out a form. Uh, another way you can do this, if you know there's certain areas, certain uh, neighborhoods, for example, like out in the Houston area, the Woodlands, very kind of affluent, uh, high net worth area, you can hand pick those areas and put Woodlands in your messaging uh, to really make sure that you're uh, you're capturing the best opportunities that you can there. Um, if you have a good CRM or lead tracking platform like Retail Lead Management, RLM, uh, you can track your close rates by zip codes uh, or neighborhoods or areas. So if you know this certain area has a really high close rate, target that area with some messaging. Um, also, on the avoidance side of it, if you know certain areas are really highly occupied by renters, lots of apartments, things like that, maybe you're not necessarily in the multifamily uh, business, you're just strictly residential retail, you can avoid those areas because again, you don't want your ads showing up where people can't purchase uh, what you're offering. Huge opportunity there as far as uh, doing the negative targeting. Expansion planning. Uh, I can't tell you how much we use this. Um, if you're thinking about going into a new market, if you're thinking about adding another location or even just adding a service area from your existing location, test it out. Throw some uh, social ads up. Um, just see what kind of response you get. Uh, see what the cost is because you'll be able to start to track those costs of what that advertising is. Uh, and you can see if it's going to be a good move for your business. Uh, messaging, we kind of talked on a little bit speak directly to the consumers in that target area. I'm telling you, it builds credibility. Uh, it, it makes you just the local shop uh, that people know too, and they know you, you're a part of the community, you support the community, things like that. Uh, offers only available to a specific location. So similar back to the apparel thing that Jeff was talking about, um, hey, if you're a gator in Seminole country, uh, that speaks to me because if I live in Tallahassee, which by the way, I would never live in Tallahassee, but if I did, I would still be a gator fan uh, and I would want to know that, hey, they're supporting me even here. Um, so if you do these certain offers to a specific location, make sure you're adding that in the messaging. 
calling it out, have some fun with it. Uh, there's no better advertising than this geo-targeted with localized content in the messaging. So as, as Taylor laid out there, right, we talked about the location, we talked about the improved uh, ad efficiency and metrics you're going to see. Some ways you can sort of check out markets where you want to go. But again, that messaging is so key. And in those examples that he just talked about, like even look at that social ad, right, with 10, they don't just have Midtown in the copy. They don't just have top rated Midtown Atlanta dental team uh, in the headline at the bottom, but also the ad creative says, you know, better dentists coming to, uh, to Midtown Atlanta. They're hitting all the different areas. And again, we guarantee, we don't make guarantees here often, probably. Uh, we guarantee that these hyper local personalized approaches will lead to better performance than just blanketed bland nat uh, national campaigns. So again, the messaging is really the key because a lot of people target, you know, based on location and, you know, different areas, but the geo-targeting aspect is picking out these, you know, specific niches, carving them out and having that hyper-local message to that market. So we look at new ways that it's going to unlock opportunity. We want to talk about the messaging and the more specific, the better. So again, Here's three examples. Uh, I live in Williamsburg, New York, even though uh, Google picked up, I'm originally from the DC area, thought I was in Williamsburg, Virginia, but we're gonna let this one play. Uh, I looked at the best contractor in Williamsburg. So again, I got you know some bland uh, thumbtack one, uh, saying general contractor, top rated in my area. Good, because it calls out top rated in my area, but it, it's not really personal, right? It doesn't make me super excited to click on that ad. Then you see Angie's, we're not even gonna to touch that one with a 10 foot pole, but again, similar, they're using that hyper local uh, messaging, right, near you, or let's just call it local, not hyper local, near you, and again, pulls in some of the, con uh, the keywords that I put into Google search. Then look at the last one, Pal and Sons, right? Pal and Sons bathroom remodels, voted best in Williamsburg. I live in Williamsburg. So for me, this one really hits home. I want to work with the person that was voted best in this area, not just the, you know, a top rated one that's near me, right? So the more local that you can uh, make this message, uh, the more that you're utilizing these different geos and ability to target them, it's going to lead to better results. I can promise you I'll click that one over the other ones, uh, even though it's going to a bathroom remodel. That is uh, something that they probably need to fix on them on their end, but Again, it just shows you the power of having properly positioned targeting and messaging uh, and you know how it can really help your business. Uh, and then we talk about the relevance, right? So as you're looking at these different ways of making it super tight, right? Uh, super contextually relevant. You know, we talked about the U, uh, University of Florida examples, right? You don't always have to say U of F, right? In some, in some cases, you probably can't. Right, because you know these are institutions, and they might have copyrights associated to it. You can start to call out. So let's even use this example for the contractors, right? Gators fans' favorite contractor, right? I don't know what that would mean, but that would definitely stand out from a search ad. Uh, you know, uh, come here for the Swamps special. For those who don't know, Gainesville uh, and the stadium is known as the Swamp. Uh, you know, you can start to pair these concepts and make it super. Uh, contextual and relevant to the person that is a U of F fan. I shouldn't even point to me, that's point to Taylor. Um, but the more contextually relevant because of the geotargeting that you're leveraging there, the better. Um, again, proximity is always a good one. The near me is in my areas. But again, we're going to go with that Williamsburg top contractor more often than not. And then again, leverage your credibility. And Taylor's going to talk about this in a second. He found some great examples, but hyper-personalization will always win right? So instead of being the top contractor, voted best in Williamsburg, I know so many of you retailers have different awards, whether it is, I'm not going to mention the organizations, but top rated by, you know, company X or best of Y, you know, or even call outs, you know, winning uh, things uh, best of in your cities and states uh, and towns. Um, put that in your messaging, right? A, it makes it relevant to your community and the people that you're going after, and B, it's another opportunity to flex that credibility that you've earned. So, you know, these are ways that geotargeting can unlock new opportunities in messaging and have your ads stand out where others just 
fall flat. Um, so Taylor's going to then walk us through a couple other ways to stand out, some really creative examples that we found uh, when we were uh, doing this and ways for you to uh, increase your business. Taylor. Yeah, I mean, standing out is a huge thing nowadays. I mean, I've been in digital marketing for 15 going on 20 years, and the noise is just so much when you search anything. Uh, it's getting to be almost uh, too much. So you have to figure out a way to stand out when you're looking at your advertising. And for example, we talked about uh, the home shows earlier. Well, if you're at a home show, come up with some creative advertising, your headlines, your text, your copy that says, at the Arizona Home Show, come find us at booth, whatever that booth number is. Uh, that's immediately going to resonate. They're going to look for your booth. Um, it's just an easy way to kind of stand out amongst the noise. Uh, mention landmarks, events, or weather. I can tell you, again, Arizona, our July and into August was the hottest on record. There was not a single day in July that we were under 110 degrees for the high. Let me tell you, I can't uh, even think of how many air conditioning and HVAC ads I saw that were calling out the weather. Uh, record heat, beat the heat, things like that. There's obviously always ways uh, to do that. If you think about kind of the more somber way to look at that, if there's um, flooding or uh, ice storms that break water pipes, things like that, you obviously don't want to make light of it, but let them know that, hey, you're here to help them get through it, whatever they need, uh, things like that. So there's, there's nothing wrong um, with kind of highlighting different landmarks, things like that. Uh, I think of San Antonio specifically, the Riverwalk. In some of your ad copy, if you're in the San Antonio market, get some pictures of the Riverwalk. Put that in your in your ads. Immediately establish that connection that people know that, hey, you're here. You're not just this flippant, transient, fly-by-night uh, company. It establishes that connection. Um, so real quick, on that ad to the side there, look at this amazing example. So this is just uh, an ad that popped up for me. Uh, Ahwatukee is an area of the Phoenix Valley that I live in. It's not too far away. So this would be relevant to me, especially if I'm in their service area. Um, Pat from Ahwatukee had us build his dream guest bathroom. He posted a rating review on Google. They posted an image of the review, before and after pictures, sign up for a free quote. Uh, this is a great, example of geo-targeting um, and there was even more so after Awatuki there was one for Tempe which is another area um, so a really good uh, example of geo-targeting and kind of establishing that credibility uh, tailored offers and promotions so you want it to be relevant to your specific location again just like the ad on the right there uh, it shows that you value the community uh, some companies even do, you know, city or neighborhood specific offers. So, you know, using the Ahwatukee example, we need 10 new customers in Ahwatukee for new floors and we're offering this. Um, number one, it establishes, hey, I better do this. They only need 10 customers. Uh, but two, it's in my specific area again. Um, when you get into that, you can start to leverage your credibility, right? So think of what speaks more to you. Arizona is a pretty big state. We've got a lot of people. So would I rather deal with Arizona's best or I live in Gilbert? Do I want Gilbert's top rated? Uh, think about it as well. Arizona best, if you're a flooring company, if you're in Phoenix, but not in Tucson, well, Tucson is very different from Phoenix. So I'd rather have it tailored to me um, and really be established that the people I'm doing with are credible and a part of my community. Uh, the other great thing about this and how you start to utilize uh, the advertising just for the future is you can analyze the performance of a specific area. You know, in, in the Phoenix Valley or the East Valley where I live, there's Chandler, Mesa, Gilbert, uh, Tempe, Scottsdale, all of these different areas. Well, you can start testing them uh, to see, again, like we talked about before, not even if you're going to expand, but to see if you should advertise there because you can easily drive to any of those locations. But I can tell you, people in Scottsdale, uh, if you know anything about Scottsdale, it's kind of a hoity-toity area. Uh, they want to be talked to as they live in Scottsdale. They don't care if you're from Gilbert, things like that. They want that uh, messaging to them. So test it out. Uh, as you're testing it, you can start to refine that targeting over time. So if you realize that Ahwatukee area is not doing great, stop advertising there or adjust your copy. See what you can do in that specific area. Because if you have the same running, the same ad running in say Gilbert and Tempe, well, Gilbert's killing it. They're crushing it. Tempe's not so much. Leave Gilbert as is and start to adjust Tempe. 
that's when you start to optimize for the effectiveness uh, and really start to see your money work for you in an impactful way. So as you can see, Taylor's super passionate about geotargeting and the ways to help grow your business, especially by uh, geolocals uh, in different areas. But again, it, it is important. And it just shows that when you really start to dive in super deep to it, there is so much that you can do with this incredible functionality. Um, so obviously we're gonna move over to some q and I'm sure there's gonna be a ton of questions on this one. We've already had a ton of questions come in via the emails for the webinars that we send. Um, but again, at the end of the day, geotargeting just allows you to advertise better, right? I think that's like the most simplistic way to look at it. You can be creative, you can target those areas that you want to target, and you can really have your ads stand out. So uh, we're going to hop into some Q&A, hear what questions you guys have. Um, and again, this is really for the retailers that are running a lot of their own advertising. Uh, if you use Broadloom for advertising uh, with our managed service, uh, we do the, all this for you. Just make sure that you're super explicit with what you're looking for with your account manager and the team. But again, this is for the folks that are trying to do this on their own and you know do some really cool stuff. So let's get into some Q&A. Well, all right. So uh, a lot of people popping in and out throughout this, but uh, Debbie, I hope that answered your question at the end. If not, we can dive into it more in terms of how granular you can get. But yes, we can do radius. Yes, we can do zip code targeting. And again, as many different creative ways that you want to bring that message to the market, uh, we can help. But again, a lot of retailers are trying to do this themselves. And we want to make sure that we are providing a great resource for all those venturing out on their own. So, uh, all right, let's get some q and I got a bunch popping up here. Let's get the first up all right first question is how hard is this to set up on my own that's a loaded one um taylor i'll let you take a stab and then i can hop into this yeah i mean really if you are already in your uh, google ads account or your facebook uh, business manager account um, it's just a part of the campaign setup so really where the work uh, happens is defining what those areas are and coming up with the messaging before you even get to setting it up. So the actual setup, it's not that difficult. As you're going through the campaign uh, setup, you just put on location targeting um, and then set uh, whether it's a zip code, an address, an area, city, things like that, uh, and then just target that specifically. So the actual setup isn't super difficult if you're familiar with the platforms already. Um, but the real work comes before you even get to that point. Oh, yeah, I would uh, agree with that. Honestly, there's a ton of tutorials online. If there's a thirst for this, uh, please let us know. We're happy to walk you through it, too, what that looks like in the UI and UX of Google Ads and Facebook Ads. But again, it's not just setting it up. It's also optimizing it, managing it, and making sure that you don't have waste. There's a lot of sort of advanced features to help you avoid that. So again, we're here to help whichever way that you're looking for. Um, but uh, one of our active participants today, Mike Peterson, he's had a couple of questions. Uh, uh, Mike's asking, do we just recommend this for Google ads? Um, I'll do this and then we'll also pull up Mike's second question in a second. So let's hold on that one uh, in terms of the iOS tracking. But uh, we recommend this for both, Mike. There's no reason not to, there's not a added cost um, other than the advertising itself and not every consumer is on one platform and then just bringing it back a little bit to some digital basics, you know, we look at search as a pull mechanism and we look at paid advertising platforms like Facebook as a push mechanism. So what does that mean? Uh, push mechanism is I'm trying to generate awareness, right? So you're going to push that messaging out into the market in front of qualified flooring consumers to have them look, okay, I need, Mike, it looks like you're with Quest Interiors. Uh, I'm looking for Quest Interiors and now you're putting them top of mind. So you should be identifying your service and why they should work with you. And then that helps you with the stimulus of people then going into Google search. And when we talk about the pull, it's pulling a query, right? You're inputting, looking for best interiors around me or something along those lines. And then they're gonna see that same messaging, especially in the same geo, uh, uh, region, uh, the same, you know, we can just call it geotargeting, the same location, right? So having both 
if you're asking me my recommendation, do both. It's You're definitely going to see the yield there. And often with those two tactics, they work very much hand in hand. Um, and then jumping right into and Mike, please uh, feel free to keep asking questions up. Oh, there we go. We got another one going on. Uh, we'll get to Mike's other question in a second. Uh, Will the change to iOS 17 impact retargeting? Uh, yes, to a certain degree, right? Uh, Apple uh, sort of kicked the, um, the stool from underneath Facebook a little bit with that iOS tracking changes, although Facebook has found a new way to get in front of those customers. And honestly, uh, the data is refreshed so frequently that more often than not, it's still going to be as impactful. And I can't remember which which webinar we talked about it, but retargeting is going to be, you know, your best performing uh, tactic. Um, people have already shown interest. You're now following them around and helping drive that awareness into a, uh, you know, into the interest level. We're going to try to convince them to then convert with you. So we always recommend a with prospecting and brand awareness at the top. And then as you start to convince customers down the funnel, uh, retargeting helps you know either seal the deal or further drive home uh, that awareness. So um, yes, it did change it, but it hasn't made it useless. Retargeting is still one of the best performing tactics in all digital media, not just Google, not just Facebook, but everywhere. And then what about uh, Bing or Yahoo? Depends on how big your budgets are, right? Uh, search is uh, much more expensive than uh, Facebook, but it's also much more qualified um, so you have to start to make those decisions. And if you do work with Broadloom, uh, please talk to your account manager in terms of how to split those budgets. But, uh, you know, Google covers so much. It's typically the first browser that a lot of people go to. Now, the interesting thing about Yahoo and Bing is they have integrated their search functionality into a lot of websites. So you might not be going to yahoo.com or bing.com to search, but on other websites that have search functionality, they've actually integrated it there. So when you see those sort of two metrics of like who has the share of searches, uh, Google is always going to be number one. I, we talked about this uh, a few weeks ago. Uh, YouTube search is actually number two. Uh, and then, you know, uh, Yahoo and Bing are further down there. So, you know, I always like to focus on the lion's share where you're going to get the most opportunity. And that's typically Google. Uh, if you have massive budgets and you have a ton of locations and you, you have the budget to spare, you can look into Yahoo and Bing. But um, you know, it, it really depends on what your store's goals are. Um, and Mike, please let us know any questions. We're going to keep pulling them up as uh, people share them. Uh, so let's pull up the next question on our list. All right. Uh, is this one about competitors? Yes. Okay, sweet. Uh, can I tell if a competitor uh, is geotargeting my store? Taylor, can you? So yes and no. I mean, one, obviously, if you're seeing their ads a ton and you're at your store, um, you could possibly, you know, assume that they're geotargeting your store. Is there a confirmed definitive way to say X company is geotargeting me? Not really, um, but just, it's kind of common sense. I mean, use your better judgment. If you're seeing all their ads at your store, um, number one, maybe they're just retargeting you. Uh, number two, um, and let me back up. Maybe they're retargeting you because you've been on their website, checking them out, things like that. Um, so that could be one of the explanations or yeah, maybe they are. Um, there's not really a definitive way to do it, um, to check on it, but just kind of use your common sense and better judgment as you're, as you're looking to see if they are. Yeah. You're not going to be able to see specifically, um, if it's like Jeff's flooring store that they're going after. Um, but again, they're probably targeting your uh, zip code, your DMA, your region, uh, if they're advertising smart, because I would go after my competitors too. Um, so obviously there's other ways to work around that. We can get super technical on the digital advertising side about bid adjustments and you want to increase your uh, bids during key areas to try to make sure that they don't show up. With that said, uh, Google looks at the overall quality and sort of alignment between the keyword, the website it's going to, and the ad. And more often than not, it's going to be less expensive and more efficient for you to advertise on your own terms and in your own area than a competitor unless they're blowing their entire budget on it. Um, so, you know, we always say defense is the best offense, number one, right? Make sure that you're targeting your own areas and, you know, have that covered. And then B, 
certainly go after them as well um, because their service areas and their store areas, you want to make sure that when people are searching for them, they're starting to see your ads. And again, that's that sort of softer approach where you can use Facebook to create awareness around your customer or your competitors areas so that they've seen your ads and your messaging constantly. And then they might search and see, oh, there's, there's that company that I saw doing really cool advertising online. So, you know, that, that's why we always look at it as integrated media, right? It's sort of all encompassing. It's not just one tactic or one platform that you're advertising. It should be all of them at the same time with that strategy in place. Um, all right, I'm just trying to see if there are any responses on that one. Uh, does not- yeah, and Jeff, just to expand on that, I mean, it kind of goes into the competitive conquesting, right? Um, you know, if you do decide you have some budget to go after that, um, you know, you can target maybe a competitor store and say, didn't find what you're looking for, check this out, things like that. So, I mean, there's all kinds of tactics you can use uh, instead of worrying about what they're doing, just control what you can control, spend your money how you decide to, disp- to spend it. Definitely. And look, as you dive in further and further, I think Taylor and I could probably talk about messaging for a very long time because there's so many ways for you to be creative there. You know, if they're family owned since 1995 and you are family owned since 1990, you know, start to find the areas that you win, right? Um, if they offer, if they're top rated, but you have a actual award, you know, uh, I'm from originally Chevy Chase, right? Chevy Chase's number one, blah, blah, blah. If you won that local award, definitely make sure that you're putting that in there. So when they're top rated, I still want to pick the best of or the number one. So find the opportunities of where you win. But like Taylor is saying, you know, run your business and, you know, make sure that you're highlighting the things that are going to help you win. And then you can start to adjust some of the messaging and run some, you know, examples or uh, experiments uh, to see which ones are performing better because you'll, you'll be able to tell pretty quickly. The, uh, the feedback loop on both Facebook and Google are about as fast as you can get. Um, you can see your performance day to day, month to month, week to week, certain time periods. Uh, yeah, I, I, I can keep going across this, but uh, <laughs> we don't want to keep you, uh, y'all here uh, all day. Uh, all right, we got a fresh one coming in. Yep, Bob Wayne. Uh, is this a technique best leverage with a store that has actual e commerce capability or will regular websites still serve? Uh, this serves everyone. I'd say this is just, you know, take a step back. This is, you know, a essential advertising tactic uh, that every store should be taking advantage of um, because even if you're not an e-commerce store, right, you might have a, other sort of e-commerce light uh, capabilities. Uh, a lot of broadland retailers have the ability to send online sample orders and those, you know, show up as leads as well. Uh, you, you're going to get phone calls and form fills. Uh, so Bob, on that front, uh, everyone should be geotargeting. And, you know, Taylor pointed out really nicely in the presentation, you know, home shows, well, we know dealers do tons of home shows, calling out your booth, calling out a special, because, you know, people, you know, step away from the trade floor, they're in the restroom, they're responding to calls, uh, they open up their laptop. And when they're looking for stuff on site, you're going to show up there as well. You know, come by booth one, two, three for our, you know, show uh, special uh, it's just another way to get top of mind awareness around people that you know are looking for the product at the place uh, where you are. So, uh, Taylor, anything you want to add on Bob's question? No, I mean, I think obviously there's uh, different messaging and tactics you can use, whether you're full e commerce, partial e commerce, or just standard website. Um, but yeah, like Jeff said, uh, everybody should be doing it. Uh, there's no reason not to. I mean, even if you're sharing, reviews and the, to get a quote, things like that. I mean, a lead is a lead and you want to be present uh, where people are looking for that. And again, the local expert. So yeah, I agree with Jeff. Um, any website should be doing this. All right. Uh, just because I feel like this is still on the same sort of thematic and top uh, topic. Uh, next question we got was, uh, is this why when I leave a store, I see their ads constantly um, so it could be a couple of different reasons. Um, and again, you never really know uh, what's going on sort of uh, underneath or behind the digital veil, if you will, um, the digital curtain of Oz. Uh, but it could be a number of things, right? It could be like Taylor, what he was talking about was um, remarketing, right? If you went to the website, uh, if you engage with any of their platforms or websites um, or even video ads, uh, they can follow you and that is not limited to geotargeting. Now you can geotarget where that shows up, but 
unless it, you're in a super transient area. Uh, I like to leave geotargeting open uh, on remarketing because again, as we mentioned, that is your most qualified person. They have had some interaction with your brand. So I want to keep my messaging in front of them as long as possible. Um, but then the other side is, you know, when you leave the store, you still could be falling into the geo-targeted area that they are targeting. So what does that mean? Let's go back to the example that we had in the presentation. When we're talking about the, you know, university apparel company uh, that's focusing on uh, University of Florida gear, right? Uh, let's say that first step that we looked at was the entire state of Florida or even just Gainesville. So let's think of Gainesville as like the area you're targeting and then your store as the actual stadium, right? If they're targeting Gainesville, you're going to see it in the stadium. And then when you leave the stadium, so it really just depends on how big the advertiser is and how big of an area that they're targeting. Uh, we can't definitively say that they, you know, retargeted you, or it was just based on this one area, uh, because once you do show that intent, you are going to see that ad more likely than not again. Um, so, you know, it, it just depends on the location. So whoever left that one, that one came uh, via email. Um, so whoever that was, if you want to drop uh, any clarification in the chat, we're happy to talk through that. But I think that might be the questions for oh uh debbie uh, we already talked about the one question uh yes we do provide that as our managed service uh offering uh and again uh it's one thing to expand it on the geo or the region or the zip um but if you're running any specials great opportunity to have some you know unique copy there um something that's calling out the special or a promotion or some of the key value props of why work with um carpet and tile warehouse uh, so um, definitely recommended in terms of ways that you can sort of continue to uh, tie in your overarching messaging from social ads to the copy to your website. You know, the more that that messaging is aligned, the better success that you're going to see in performance. Um, all right, Taylor, anything that you want to add to that? I think that might be all the questions for today. Yeah, no, I mean, I would just say that even at some of the largest shows that we do, you know, as Broadloom, it's not just something that we're recommending everybody else does. These are active tactics that we use. So like when we're at surfaces in Las Vegas, uh, we are running those ads, saying what our booth number is, come see us, uh, things like that. So uh, we're practicing what we preach um, and we highly, highly recommend it. Uh, I'm sure we'll be doing it at FloorCon as well. Um, if people want some more information, things like that. Um, so yeah, we're, we're not just speaking from a soapbox. We actually live this every day. Yeah. Uh, and again, uh, you know, hold us to it. When we see you at surfaces this year, again, we want to highlight our new, uh, functionalities and things that we're bringing to market. And we know there's a lot of flooring retailers that are out in Las Vegas during that time period. So, uh, if you were in Vegas now, you're not going to see that ad other than our sort of broader national campaigns. But when you're there, you're going to see, you know, specific call outs, you know, attending services, come by booth, blah, 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 for our show season special. Um, so, yeah, uh, I think that's what we got for today. I'll, I'll hang back a second or two to see if there's any more questions. But if there aren't, we are going to let you all get back to selling and appreciate you all joining us for another webinar Wednesday. Uh, we will be back in two weeks. So keep your eyes peeled for that. Uh, we got some new fun products and functionality uh, to showcase there. Uh, Taylor, anything to tease yet, or do, do we have to keep it quiet for another day or so? We'll keep it a little quiet for, for a couple of days, um, but I, I feel like we can't end this. We've talked so much about the Florida Gators and kind of that uh, era. I mean, we have to just talk about FloorCon just a little bit and kind of that keynote speaker that we have. All right. No, that's totally fair. So, again, you know, we are super fired up to have Tim Tebow as our keynote speaker at FloorCon this year. We also have a couple of massive uh, additional keynotes that we're going to be announcing. Uh, so the programming is going to be going live, but on the uh, Tebow side, make sure that you're getting your tickets. We're continuing to offer the exclusive opportunity to meet Tim in person. Uh, we're offering a few meet and greets. And every single person that attends FloorCon is going to get a signed copy of his new book, Mission Possible. And if you guys haven't watched the Netflix series, Swamp Kings, uh, definitely do it. You know, I was fired up for Tebow just because I sort of know the, the legend that he is, but when you start to see him in the moment, uh, 
and what, doing what he did on the field. And, you know, that's only a small slice of who he really is. Uh, it really got me fired up. Taylor, I, I know this one's a lot closer to your heart. Uh, uh, I, I know you've already finished Swamp Kings too, right? 100%. Yeah. So I got one more episode to go. But if you guys haven't watched it, watch it. It'll get you fired up for Floricon. A little motivation to get you through uh, the month of August. And we will see you guys in Amelia Island on November 28th through December 1st. Again, chance to win a Tesla or $50,000 cash and get a hole-in-one. Uh, Taylor is running the golf tournament on that front. So excited to see you all there. Have a wonderful Wednesday and uh, see you in two weeks. Bye, everybody.